We are flying in a helicopter over the southern end of the Wyoming range near the town of Labarge. This seemingly barren landscape is winter range for part of a herd of 30,000 mule deer. Sprawling energy development intrudes on these rolling hills. Well pads, settling ponds, and industrial plants dot the landscape. Roads, pipelines, and transmission wires braid the steppe. Mule deer populations fluctuate naturally, almost on a decade-long cycle, but they have not recovered from their last downturn. Deer hunters, wildlife lovers, Wyoming Game and Fish Department, energy companies, and researchers at the University of Wyoming wonder why. During this field expedition, a team of researchers captures 175 does, seeking to understand the forces that shape their health and lives. Hi, I'm Angus Thurmer, a wildfire reporter. This is pilot Mark Shelton, who flies the helicopter for Native Range Capture Services. And this is Donnie Wackerman. He's what they call a mugger. He uses a net bullet and a capture rifle to catch deer and a carabiner. Donnie is a good shot, and Mark is a skilled pilot. Donnie and Mark track and find specific radio collared mule deer. Donnie steps on the skid of the helicopter to shoot. When the net stops the deer, Donnie jumps out. He trusses the doe with two hobbles. You have to be aggressive and gentle, he says. Doe mule deer weigh 150 pounds and more. Mark keeps an eye on the deer as Donnie climbs into the flying helicopter. It hasn't touched the ground. The ground teams wait for the deer to arrive. They spring into action. The ground team confirms what Donnie discovered a few minutes ago how much this doe weighs. They will spend about 10 minutes collecting information and changing batteries as needed before setting the deer free. The teams are made up of Wyoming Game and Fish wardens, graduate students, wildlife researchers, and University of Wyoming professors. The university's cooperative research unit oversees most of this. Studies focus on migration, habitat, nutrition, and the impact of oil and gas development on muleys. Researchers strive to minimize stress on the deer. Everyone speaks softly. If deer overheat, they are cooled with a cold water enema. Some researchers pet and stroke a doe, speaking in soothing tones. For all their dedication to objective science, some of them cannot hide their affection for these magnificent mothers. After being poked and prodded during their alien abduction, the deer finally get to go home. Most express their relief with a kick. They bound onto their winter range, facing wind and cold, on meager rations. In this challenging and changing world, what people do will determine their fate.